Stefan Ritter, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. We're standing in front of a great, grand synagogue. This looks very old, and, and it's very stately. How, tell me about the synagogue. Did you go here? I did. Uh, in fact, you know, uh, growing up in Stockholm, uh, we used to go here. But nowadays, when I go, I go to smaller, let's say more orthodox synagogue, because this one, they have changed uh, very much. So, you know, made it very liberal and, you know, uh, now there is a female rabbi and uh, she works a, she wears a kippa and she wears a talis so i don't feel at home there anymore it happens though one and sometimes okay um i don't want to get in, into religious questions i want to talk about uh, politics yeah. when i think of jews i don't think of sweden no, but i uh, i suppose uh, jews were safe here during the second world war some jews fled here from denmark, denmark. Right. when did your family come to sweden well, uh, you know, my mother came as a refugee from Austria when Hitler took over in '38, and uh, my father he had been here before. So, uh, but he wasn't born here, but he had you know been traveling back and forth. So they met here. I gotta say, um, you come across. You look to me to be a bit of a tough guy. You're wearing a shirt that says "Infidel." You're wearing cowboy boots, which I didn't know Swedes would do, and uh, I understand that in this culture of appeasement and progressivism that you want to stand firm for Swedish values. Tell me about that. For Swedish values? Well, I understand that you, you believe that Sweden is under attack yeah. from jihad. Yes, is that true? I do. I do. Are Jews at risk in Sweden? Yes, very much so. Give me an example. How are Jews at risk? You know, uh, it, it, uh, they have been made, they have, there's been polls and uh, uh, everybody, you don't need the polls, you, you know, uh, no, hardly any Jews in Sweden uh, dare to wear a Magen David around their neck. A Star David or a Yarmulke on their head, oh, no, do they wear that? No. Uh, uh, if they do that and they come out of the synagogue, they'll be advised from the guards to take it off. It's very, no, no, it's, it's, it's bad. What happens, uh, what happens to a Jew who wears a Star David or a kippah on their head out in the city? What would happen to them? He might get hit. He might get hit. Uh, By whom? Who would hit him? Muslims. New immigrants, uh, migrants, or uh, old, uh, like, would it be young men or yeah, anyone? Yeah, uh, preferably young men, and it could be older men too. But, you know, and that's also a thing among Jews. Uh, older guys like me, we are not so exposed. The ones who are in danger are the kids who are maybe, who are, you know, going to school and have all their schoolmates, uh, they are more or less hostile to Israel. They don't have to be Muslims, all of them, but uh, they are all more or less hostile. So, so it's a Well, let's, let's split it. It's I mean, th this, I believe that anti-Semitism and anti-Israel extremism is one problem, but physical violence and terrorist-style attacks are another problem. Which is the problem in Sweden? If you are a Jew, are you just going to be demonized and marginalized, which can be done by a leftist Swede as well as a Muslim migrant, or you actually, you talked about actually getting hit. Which is the risk, or is it both? It's both, it's both, and uh, as I said, preferably for young ones, uh, because they move around with young people, and uh, all the Swedish young people go to school together with, and are friends with uh, kid, uh, so children of, from the immigrants, who are, and the immigrants in Sweden are the majority from Muslim countries, and as we know, the majority of people from Muslim countries have very strong anti-Semitic views. And that's a fact. Now, you say that the Swedish government and that many Swedish people are anti-Israel, and I believe that. Yeah. Have they stood up against anti-Semitism in Sweden? Has the Swedish government said or done anything to object to anti-Semitism? Yeah, now and then they do. But, you know, it, it's not very strong and it doesn't feel <laughs> like with a great compassion. Uh, it's uh, because they don't want to hurt their Muslim voters either. The Muslim voters are much more important than the few Jewish voters they have. Now, in places like France, the Jews are getting out. They're yeah. leaving by yeah. the thousand. I think it was close to 15,000 Jews who left last year. How about in Sweden? Are Jews staying in Sweden or are they leaving? Uh, they are... Up, up till now, they're staying, but n nearly all of them are, you know, 
talking about do we have a future here? Can we stay? And as you know, you've been to Malmö, I know. There, from there, they have been leaving. Some left to Israel, some left to Stockholm, some left to the U.S. There used to be a Jewish population in Malmo. Now it's almost gone. They, yeah. the, 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 why would a Jew stay in Malmo? I mean, it's yeah. it's almost a majority Muslim town. Even if 90% of Muslims are friendly, that's still an awful lot of people who hate Jews. Uh, but 90% are not friendly. I, I would say 90% are strongly anti-Jewish and anti-Israel. Yeah. Have you ever been attacked? Uh, no, I haven't. No. So we're standing in front of the Jewish synagogue here. Uh, I heard that you don't get along too well with the people who run it, that they want to smooth over any problems and they don't want to make a fuss. You mean in, within, within the Jewish community? I hear that the Jewish leaders don't want to yeah. make a fuss and they don't want to oppose Muslim migrants and they don't want to talk about anti-Semitism. No. Am I simplifying? Is that true? That's true, yes. It's, it's gotten a little bit better, but, you know, they, they're, in fact, right tomorrow there is a debate uh, between, uh, you know, all of these dialogues, which I don't believe in, uh, between uh, our rabbi here and uh, uh, some uh, representatives of Muslims and Christians. And so that's the, and I have talked to the rabbi and asked her, I don't believe in, I even <laughs> gave her some material about the, how anti-Semitism runs all through the Muslim religion, through the Quran. But uh, she believes in dialogue and she thinks this Iranian guy is worth talking to. I know him, I know he's not. But what Iranian guy? <laughs> it's a, he's a professor uh, and uh, supposed to be specialist in, uh, uh, in of Islam and Middle East. So... <sighs> I, I, which is, do you think that Swedes will allow the country to lose its famous progressive tolerance? Do you think that the Swedish values will slowly be replaced by creeping Sharia law? Yeah, sooner or later it looks like that because, uh, you know, Swedes are afraid of confrontation, so they back, they always back. And uh, Muslims are the other way around. They always advance. So what will the outcome be? It's not hard to see. Yes. Sorry to say. Huh. Well, I, uh, I'm just thinking about what you had to say, and it makes me a little bit sad. Yeah. I, uh, do you think that there's any country in the world that is handling the challenge of Islam uh, in, in, a, in a balanced way, that balances both, you know... Uh, I, I think... Every country almost in the whole world is doing better than Sweden in that way. And uh, as you're from Canada, much better. Uh, uh, US, much better. Australia. Uh, I mean, uh, I think Sweden is the worst. Sweden is the worst in this case. Do you have any kids? No. no. Why, don't, why don't Swedes, why don't Europeans have kids anymore? I'm not asking a personal question, <laughs> but why, why is the birth rate yeah. so low? I, I'm not picking I, on you. No. Maybe there's a reason I don't know, and I'm not no, trying no. to make you uncomfortable. But so often I hear that. people. I met a, a Swedish woman in Malmo who so says she doesn't have kids. Angela Merkel, she doesn't have kids. Germany's birth rate is the lowest in the world now. Sweden is fairly low. Why don't Swedes want to have a Swedish future? I think people, you know, I don't know more than you. I, I, I've read about these things. There are theories. And one theory is uh, people uh, have, you know, in in Europe, they have been spoiled. They want, they they care about their careers. They want first to travel around the world and do this and do that. And maybe afterwards they'll have kids. So uh, I think it's some kind of, uh, and I'm saying that although I don't have any kids myself, I think it's some kind of. Uh, the generation somehow because you don't have the will to survive yeah. well that's the thing I the Jews are a funny species I'm a Jew yeah. myself yeah. and I sometimes I feel like our people have a suicide gene right. that we always are stupid right. that we always can't see danger that we yeah. we yeah. thought until the 30s well maybe Hitler isn't yeah. as bad and it's and then I know well yeah and, and and maybe it's not a Jewish gene maybe that's just a European gene a Western liberal gene that's that is a little bit of self-deception and a little bit of hope and a little bit of cowardice. Yeah, all that I guess is true, but I think it's 
sorry to say, worse among the Jews than among the others, because somebody said the Jews never understood who's their friend and who's their enemy. And who who are the friends of the Jews in Sweden? Christian people. I mean, and I mean not from this, you know, what's called the former state church, but from the how do you say the free free uh, evangelical? The evangelical? Yes, yeah. these are friends, and there are some other friends, you know, odd people from. They are not. They can be from any, any walk of life. I've got one last question for you. In my short time in Sweden and Denmark, I think I've discovered a secret weapon, almost like a silver bullet, for dealing with a Swede or any Scandinavian, and that is, no matter what you want from them, no matter how unreasonable you are, if they don't give you what you want, accuse them of racism, yeah. <laughs> and then immediately they'll be so embarrassed. That they'll give you whatever you want. Yeah. I tried this at the library the other day. Yeah. I said, I thought you were open to refugees. Like, I said it as a joke, and they immediately scrambled to... to <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean, I'm obviously not a refugee, but I sense that in Sweden, the worst thing you could possibly say about someone, it's almost like a swear word, yeah. is, uh. I think you're racist. <laughs> and, I mean, it's... It, which is so not true. I've never been in a more tolerant, progressive place in the world what's wrong like what's wrong with people i think it has to do with bad conscience you know bad but for why who what who in sweden could have a bad conscience about anything sweets in general I what think. have sweets ever done that's bad no, that's the problem <laughs> it's bad like what what have they done i i understand <laughs> germany has some germany has some yeah. national psychological issues i get that from germany but the swedes I have the I have the you know 300 years ago they beat up beat up the danes or something <laughs> no. but but that's not anything to no, be no, too no, upset no. about today no, it's nothing to do with that my theory is you know and i part of it is i'm guessing part of it is i know i know for sure that swedes in general, uh, or the older generation at least, they have bad conscience because of Swedes, uh, Swedes acting through in World War II. Okay, they, because they didn't do anything positively good, they're, this is making well, up they, for that. They closed their borders for Jews, and they, together with the Swiss, forced the Germans to mark the Jewish passports with a J. Oh, okay. I, did, I, I don't know my Swedish history well enough. I, I just knew that the Danish Jews came here. They were much, the Danes were much better. They have nothing to, to apologize. Okay, so but the Swedes stood they, quietly by in yeah. the face of evil and then, in, in the Holocaust, and, and now this is... the doors to the Jewish right. So now the Swedes are thinking, ah, these are the Muslims are the new Jews, something like that. and we're going to repent yeah, for what happened like 80 that. years ago. Something like that. And, but they're not the new Jews. The Muslims are not the new Jews. <laughs> the opposite. But I think there's another thing also, and this is my own theory. You know, uh, Swedes are so, they know Nazism uh, is connected to the Nordic, German, Aryan race. Oh. And Swedes belong to that. And Hitler and his gang, they were very much appreciative of Swedes and Norwegians because they were the real Aryans. I had. That's uh, my theory. So, so this is a deep psychological yeah, thing of trying to prove yeah. not, not only yeah. should we have done something in the Holocaust, but we are not the Aryans that Hitler said we were. We'll prove it by being more pro-migrant than the migrants. That's exactly what you I know, so I talked to a couple of migrants in Malmo themselves who said it's time to put up the borders. Yeah. They would of be course, called, but course. they would, <laughs> yeah. they would be called racist by Aryan Swedes who are trying to say, no, 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 no. Well, that's incredible. So how, how's this going to end? How's it going to end? Is this place going to be attacked? Are the Jews going to flee? Uh, what, how, what, what does this place look I like in 25 years? In 25 years? Well, I think it's hard to say, you know, to pinpoint it like that, but I think, uh, sorry to say, I don't think there is a Jewish future in Sweden. Some is there a Swedish future in Sweden? More so, at least. More so, at least. Because, you know, uh, when you don't, if you're afraid to show your identity and show who you are, what kind of life will you be living?